Okay, so in this lesson, um, we're going to look at common electronic components and their symbols. So it's really important that you know these symbols, how to represent them, and you know how to construct uh, diagrams like this. Okay, and then you're able to look at the diagram and identify what each of the electronic components are. Okay, so by the end of this learning section, students should be able to design and build simple electronic circuits. So part of being able to do that is to know the symbols that are used and what each of them represent. So just looking at this, so this is a simple sketch, if you like, that shows the layout of a simple uh, circuit. And each of these bits here are what are known as electronic components. So for example, this symbol here represents a light bulb. So it's just a basic light bulb that emits light. This symbol here represents a switch. This symbol here represents um, a cell or a battery. And then the lines represent basically some kind of conducting material. So there's a number of different components that you're going to use. And therefore you need to be able to draw a simple diagram like this. And then you need, to, you need to be able to identify the parts on the diagram as well. So we'll have a look at those. Also as well, you need to be able to know how to measure um, the three quantities. So for example, current, resistance, and um, voltage. Okay, so it's important that you know how to measure those. So let's have a look. Okay, so these are the meters. So basically meters are used to measure uh, measure the different uh, quantities. So for example, voltage, amps, and ohms. And there's also symbols that we use to represent these if we want to draw a simple circuit. So the first one that we want to look at measuring is if we need to measure voltage. So we use um, potential difference, sometimes it's called potential difference, it means voltage, is measured with a voltmeter connected in parallel to the components in the circuit. Okay, so this is what's known as a voltmeter, and this is what a voltmeter looks like. So it's connected in parallel to the circuit, and you get a reading on this then of volts, and that's how you read um, voltage. The next one then is current. So remember current is like the flow of electricity. Current, me current is measured with an ammeter connected in series to the circuit. So this is what an ammeter looks like. And you have, um, this is the symbol that represents an ammeter. And then the last one, so resistance then is measured with an ohm meter. So connected directly to the component, uh, multimeters can act as voltmeters, ammeters, or ohm meters. So, and this is the symbol for the ohm meter. So this is what's known as a multimeter. So basically inside this device, you have voltmeters, you have ammeters, and then you have, so these are what are known as an ohm meters as well. So you have, you can measure all three quantities with, with what's called um, a multimeter. So it's important that you know, if you're asked, for example, how would you measure voltage, you would use a voltmeter. If you're asked to identify like what this symbol is, you know what the symbol means. If you're asked how do you how would you measure current, you use an ammeter and you're able to identify the symbol. And then also then resistance, you use a multimeter um, or what's known as an ohm meter. And again, you're able to identify these uh, symbols here. So they're the meters, and meters are just things that you're used. They're kind of like the measuring tapes, if you like, of uh, electronics. So the next piece then we're gonna look at are these symbols here. So this first one here represents a battery. So power supplies include 1.5 volt single cells and batteries and mains power supply supply units with built-in transformers. So these are batteries and they, they come in all different types of voltage. So the symbol for the battery is this. So when you see it, it has the positive terminal, which is generally the longer one. And then it has the negative terminal, which is which is this, this shorter one as well. So these are batteries here. These are different types of batteries. So you will have, in these ones, you have the terminal, you have the negative terminal and the positive terminal at the top, and you'll see the symbols on it as well. Whereas when you're looking at a battery like this, you have, you have the positive and negative terminal on either side of the battery. So again, this is what produces the electrons and pushes the electrons, if you like, around the uh, circuit. 
it's what's known as a battery and that's where you get your voltage from so this one here then is a switch so switches can break or complete circuits so common switches are push switches or toggle switches so these are examples of um you have ones so these are toggle ones that you just put that you switch on or off and then you have ones that you just push up or down and then here we have lamps so we have basically a light so lights uh, convert electrical energy to light energy so what happens is as i mentioned before you get the flow of electrons through the component it's generally made of a resistant material that resists the flow of electricity as a result it gets really hot and then it glows and it gives off um, light energy so these are typical examples of um, lamps So if we look at this example here, so we have, so this is um, an ammeter. Okay, so it's measuring the current that's flowing through the circuit. So this circuit is, has a number of components. So it has a switch. Okay, so the switch will basically turn on or off the circuit. And basically what it does is when you, when you turn it on or off, it breaks the circuit. It either breaks or reconnects the circuit like so. Um, here you have a fuse so basically few we'll talk a little bit about fuses in a minute so fuses basically are used to their safety devices they will only let a certain amount of electricity flow through the circuit if the current gets too high and um, what will happen is the fuse will trip and the circuit and the circuit will be broken and that's just for safety reasons so for like for example it'll stop um, components in your circuit from burning out so as an example if we have a look at this so we can see here that this fuse has a high, it's set at 20 amps. So if the if the flow of electricity goes above 20 amps, then this circuit is going to break. Now what we can do is we can lower this down. So we can see that the circuit, at the moment, the flow of electricity through it, the current is 5.3 amps. So if we reduce this down to, if we go, so for example, if we bring it down to four amps, we can see that straight away, it breaks the circuit because that flow of electricity is too strong. And that's, this is what's known as a fuse. So we'll set this back up here, let's hit the 13 amps, and we'll get it going again. So that's a fuse. The battery then is what provides the voltage. So again, the higher the voltage, you can see as you increase the voltage, the current starts to increase as well. So the amount of electricity flowing through the circuit increases. And we can see that you know, the bigger the bigger the voltage, the, the more electricity that's actually going to flow through the uh, circuit. Okay, If we lower the voltage, we can see it lowers the amount of current flowing through the circuit. So this is a battery, and again, it provides the voltage. And then this is a light, and it basically takes the electrical energy and it converts it into light energy, and it gives off light. So these are the basic components. So again, it's important that you're able to draw these and that you're able to identify what each one of them represents. So these guys here are resistors. So this is generally what they look like. Um, so a fixed resistor, it has a fixed resistance. Uh, fixed resistors can vary in value from uh, and we measure resistance in ohms. It's this kind of like like horseshoe shaped symbol. To so it can go from one ohm, okay, to many thousands of ohms, okay. So this is like a thousand ohms, one kilo ohm, which is a thousand ohms. So you, resistors basically what they do is they resist or they slow down the flow of the the current flowing through the circuit. This here is a variable resistor. So instead of having a fixed one, you can have one that you can adjust the resistance on it. So variable resistors are used in circuits to control the current and they can be found in dimer switches for lights and in volume controls for radios as well. So for example, when you turn things up, when you turn a light up or down, uh, these are what are known as variable resistors. So they vary the, the amount of resistance of the electricity. And as a result of that, they can increase or decrease volume or they can also increase or decrease um, like electrical energy being converted into light energy. So what we can see here, um, so we have our circuit set up. So I've taken out the fuse and I've put in a resistor here. So what we can see is that the uh, resistors, what they do is they resist the flow of electricity. So as we can see here, 
So we have the voltage set up to maximum voltage. So the bigger the resistance, the bigger the resistance on the resistor, the more, so for example, the more resistance of electrical flow. So, so you can see as you, if you have it up to 5,600 5, ohms, it completely resists the flow of electricity. Whereas if I lower that down, we can see that it allows some of the electricity to allows electricity to continue to flow. Now, what you can see here as well is like th these can be used on dimmer switches, for example, that you have in houses. So as you turn, you can have so this is a fix. You can have ones that are fixed, or you can have ones that are variable in that you can adjust them. There's like a knob on it that you can use to turn and adjust it. So for example, this is like a variable resistor. As I turn the resistor, the resistance increases, and what it does if we look at the light up here. And um, what it'll do is it will like either dim the light or it'll make the light shine brighter like that. Okay, so that can be one of the uses of these what are called variable resistors. So just to have a look at again, if we look at it at, like the chemical symbols, so this is kind of the chemicals or not the chemical symbol, but the electronic symbol that they use to represent resistors. And also as well, you have this symbol here. So it's just a box like that, or you have one like this with an arrow going through it which indicates that it is a variable resistor. So the next one then are these, what are their, their special types of resistors. So this one is what's called a light dependent resistor and they have, they have large resistance in darkness and low resistance in bright light and they're used in light sensing circuits. So for example, uh, this is kind of like what they look like. Light will shine on here. So when they're, so you can have them in, set up in different ways. You can have ones that are, so in the dark, for example, they're completely resisting the flow of electricity. And then as light comes out, they will uh, stop, re stop resisting the flow of electricity. So the resistance of the resistor depends on the amount of light that's shining on top of it. So again, they're, they're useful for used in, they're, they can help the circuit to sense the environment and, and see how much light is in the environment. And then they can control the flow of electricity because of that. Then you have these what are called as um, thermal resistors. So these are resistors that have large resistance when it's cold and low resistance when it's hot. And they can be used in temperature sensing circuits. So this is kind of typically what they look like. And they enable the, the circuit to sense the temperature, for example, in a liquid or in the environment. And what they'll do is they'll either increase or decrease the flow of electricity. So you can have like thermal resistors in kettles, for example, that once they get to a certain temperature, uh, they will kick in and they'll stop the electricity flow into the element in the, in the kettle and that turns off the kettle. So again, these are like very useful components uh, in electronic devices. So you have the light dependent resistor and the thermal dependent resistor. So the, the Act like resistors, but it depends. This one depends on the amount of light shining on it, how resistant it is, and this one depends on the temperature and how resistant it is, how resistant it is because of that. The next kind of electronic device is this guy here, and this is what they look like, um, which are called diodes. So basically, what diodes do is they control the direction of current. So they allow they only allow the flow of electricity in one direction. Um, and they can be used, they can convert alternating current into direct current. So you have two types of flow of electricity. You have electricity that just flows in one direction, which is called direct current, and then you have electricity that flows in both directions at the same time, and that's what's known as alternating current. But with a diode, you can think about it as kind of like a valve. It only allows the electricity to flow in one particular direction. So this is what they look like. And you have both sides, you have the anode side, which is the negative side, and then you have the cathode side, which is the positive side, like so. And to remember that, you can think about this, this here. Okay, so you have positive and negative. This is the symbol for them. So you can think about this triangle is like the P, so it represents the positive side, and then the line attached onto it is part of the N, so this is the negative side. So when you're connecting up, so basically it's like a valve, it'll only allow electricity to flow in one direction. So when you're connecting these up, you if you want the electricity to flow, you would connect the positive side. For example, this is the positive side, the bigger side, which would be this side here. You connect that up in line with the positive terminal on the battery, 
and then this is the negative side, the side that has the band, you connect it up with the negative side of the battery. So when you turn this on, the electricity will flow. Now, and this is what's called, um, it's what's called forward bias. So when it's connected up like this, it's called forward bias. This will allow electricity to flow through the circuit. If you were to take this out and switch it around so that the negative side of the diode is lined up with the positive side of the battery and the positive side of the diode is lined up with the negative side of the battery, that's called reverse phase and that will not allow electricity to flow through the circuit. So you can think about these, they're kind of like control valves and they basically control the flow of electricity and they are called diodes. And again, this is the symbol for it. This is the symbol here. You have the negative side and you have the positive side. And this is a useful way to remember them. And this is what they look like. And this is what they're like when you set them up in a circuit. The next one are the fuses. So we looked at the fuses. These are like safety devices. So fuses are designed to break a circuit when the current is too high. Fuses protect components from overheating. So basically they will trip and they will stop the um, flow of electricity and they'll stop your components from being like from too much electricity or too much too many electrons flowing through your components. This one here, uh, so again, it, this is what's known as an LED or a light emitting diode. They produce light when connected in forward bias. LEDs are, are very energy efficient as they use very little power. So again, this is your LED. It's, kind of, it's, it's very, very much like a diode, like same kind of symbol, but it has these two arrows coming out of it, which indicate like light coming out of it. And again, they're very efficient. They don't get as hot as bulbs and they, um, they take le less electricity to use in order to get them to light up. So they are what are known as LEDs or light emitting diodes. And then these last two then, so you have like buzzers and motors. So buzzers, they produce sound when a current flows through them and they're used as an audible warning or an alarm. So for example, if you have a doorbell, so when you press the button on the doorbell, it closes the circuit, electricity will run, run through a buzzer and that will chime or indicate that somebody's present at the door. Okay, so that's a buzzer. And um, this is kind of like what they look like. And um, but basically when electricity flows through it, it makes sound. So it takes electrical energy and it turns it into sound energy. And this is the symbol first. So again, important that you know it. The next one then is motors produce uh, rotational kinetic energy when a current flows through them. And this is the symbol for a motor. So again, when electricity goes through it, it turns. So what's happening is you're getting electrical energy, the kinetic energy from the electrons moving, being converted into, um, so you've electrical energy being converted into kinetic energy or movement energy. And this can be used, for example, if you put a propeller on this, it can be used to like propel something through the water or it can be used to make something like, like fly in the air. So these are what are known as motors um, and they produce rotational kinetic energy. So that means that they, they move in a circular motion. So that so that is the like a like a basic circuit uh, for an electronic device and the common um, electronic components and their symbols. So it's very important that you know each one of those symbols, you know what they do and what their function is, and that you're able to draw a simple circuit. Okay, thank you for listening.